Hello, I'm Atuba George. Now today is Friday. Praise God. Listen, all week I've been sharing very important truths with you about fulfilling prophecies. And yesterday I told you something. What stops you from fulfilling prophecy? Number one, unbelief. Now, when I say unbelief, Try to explain that to you yesterday. Not because you don't believe that Jesus is Lord or is there. But you haven't applied your mind to his ways and his thoughts. And that's, this, is, this is what happens to a whole lot of people. Listen, listen. Before you will get to that point, I shared with you earlier in the week that you can, just like in the book of Joel, now that, that's our reference point. The book of Joel said, It shall come to pass afterwards, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And then we find Peter speaking in the book of Acts, chapter 2, saying, This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass, I'll pour out of my spirit. And I told you the difference in, in those two statements by the spirit of God. Then I told you, I said, You may begin the process. Of fulfilling a prophecy but you may not end up fulfilling it what will stop you from not fulfilling the prophecy even if you start you see the beginning of the process is the Spirit of God being supplied for it for you to get to that end is determined by you if you qualify now that's why I took you back to share with you the story of the children of Israel God spoke about them right from Abraham and they got to that point where they were meant to fulfill the prophecy. The Spirit of God was supplied. They came out of Egypt. They were on that journey to the promised land. They eventually got into the promised land. But guess what? They did not receive the inheritance. They got the physical land. But they didn't enjoy the real blessing upon that land. Why? Because of unbelief. In fact, everyone that left Egypt, God had to wait for them to die in the wilderness. Then he took a new crop of people, apart from Joshua and Caleb, into the promised land, physically. Why? Because these guys couldn't apply their minds. See, you've seen God supply manna day and night. You've seen God supply meat. You've seen God kept you guys from the rains. You've seen God fight your battles for you. You've seen all those things. Yet, it was difficult for them to believe everything God has said about this land is true. You know what it is to be eating manna every day for 40 years, yet they still didn't trust God. Now, before you fulfill God's prophecy, God leads you through that path of complete trust. If you cannot show complete trust in God, you will not get to the end of that prophecy. You won't receive it. The Spirit of God will be supplied to you at the beginning and you start the journey, but then God will be monitoring your heart to see if you will know, if you will understand. How do you understand? When you see the power of God and you tell yourself, hey, if God can do this, then it means he can also do this. So I can trust him. That was what Joshua and Caleb said. When they went to Spider and did they see the giants? Yes, they saw the giants like the others saw the giants. But their judgments were different. They said, hey, if God have said the land is ours, then let's go ahead and take it, despite the giants in the land. What, what, what were they basing their reasoning on? The facts that they have seen. They have seen God deal with people for, on their behalf. They have seen God do miracles on their, for them. They have seen water come out of the rock. They have seen meat come out from nowhere. They've seen manna every day. You know, like, come on now. I mean, if God says a land is ours, then let's go take it. The other said, nah, you want to kill people here? Because oh. when we go, we'll fight. So some people will die. We don't want that to happen. Two men believed 
all they had was their experience. And they said the power of God can carry us into this land. They understood. The same thing with your life. You may be there watching me right now. You've, you've seen testimonies in your life. But you're stuck somewhere. Listen, if, if you find out in your life that sometimes you know what God has told you. But you seem not to be able to enter. You, see, you seem to be stagnant in one spot. And you've tried everything you know to do. It doesn't seem to work. You just can't move from this spot. I'll tell you what exactly is going on. God is waiting for you to get to that place of understanding. So what do you do? Look at the things that God has done in your life. Supernatural in I mean. <clears throat> have, Has he saved your life? Have you, have you seen a supernatural occurrence? Especially in this, in this journey of yours now. Let's say God is telling you, you will own a company. Yes, I believe. And you, you, you seem to, not, you're not sure, should I resign and start it? And you've been there for how many years now? Trying to make that decision, should I go, should I not go, should I go, should I not go? What do you do? God is waiting for you. You are there waiting for God, but God is actually waiting for you. What's he waiting for me for? To understand. So what do you do? Say, hey, first of all, who's going to sustain this company? And I know what you think. Okay, if I leave now, I'll stop any salary. And when I start my company, I don't know when I'll start making profit. So how do I do? Okay, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'll start the company. I'll be doing it part-time, and then I'll be doing this. And God is just watching. And then you, you say, okay, you start. And then uh, you now realize that this company is distracting you from your job. You're not becoming productive at your job. And you need that salary. And you know what? It's not your time. Let me suspend my, my, my private stuff. And let me focus on this one. Okay, I'm going to earn some more money. I'm going to save for the next two years. I'll have enough money. Then I can bone and go. It doesn't work that way. So what do you do? Look. Hey. So, so months, I finished my salary in two days because there was an emergency that happened. How did I survive till the end of the month? And then you begin to think about it. And you say, hey, I remember that thing. Somebody walked up to me and said, he felt led to give me this thing. Hmm. Yeah. I also remember that same period. So, so and so thing happened. Somebody that was owing me for many years suddenly came. I didn't even ask him. He suddenly came and started begging and he paid me the money. And that was how I was able to sustain, sustain myself till, whoa. If I step out by faith, because the Lord has already spoken to you that this is your direction. If I step out by faith, the Lord is going to sustain me. Now, when you come to that place of understanding, then be ready to hear God say, move. If you don't come to that place of understanding, you know what you're going to be doing? You're going to be, you're going to be double-minded. One leg in, one leg out. And I remember what the Bible says, a double-minded man, he cannot receive anything from God. So that business you're going to start will end up being a failure. It will fail. Why? When God is telling you to start, this is not you thinking it out. This is not you trying to be, make out something for yourself. This is you saying, God had a dream. Or God gave a word to me that I will step out on my own. I will have my own business. Or I'll be so, so, and so. I'll be so, so, and so. If God is the one that is calling it, then you have to do it in faith, trusting in the Lord. This is how you fulfill those prophecies. If you don't get to that place where you make up your mind by understanding, what if I don't make profit in the first one year? Not a problem. The Lord will sustain me. Now, when you say the Lord will sustain me, what are your facts? These are my facts. He has done it before. He did it here. He did it here. He will do it again. Mm. 
then you please God. You're ready to please God now. Praise God. And then you step out. Your mind, your resolve is sure. You face challenges, Father. What do you want us to do now? He will tell you what to do. Because see, God is the type of God that will tell you, hey, okay, you save some money? Yes. Okay, so I want to start out, start out my business. Let me rent a small place. You know, though, you know, the Bible says my beginning may be small. So let me start from my humble beginning. And God is looking at you. Because the son, no, 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 that's not where I want your office to be. I want your office to be in that place. So say, okay, okay, you got a price. How much is the rent for this place? The rent is going to take all the money you have saved. Just rent alone. We'll take all the money you have saved. <laughs> Lord, I don't think we can handle this. So, how do we pay next year's rent? Okay, Lord, please, please, let's go to the other place. You are not ready. But I'm telling you what God will do to you. He will get rid of every arm of the flesh that you trust in. I'm telling you, at the beginning, you may have partners that, oh, wow, wonderful idea. We are ready to partner with you. We are ready. We are ready. We are, oh, all these guys are ready. Yes, we are ready. All right. I'm resigning my job. I've got partners. And then you resign from your job. And then you step out. And then you call, Mr. A, um, you know, we're, we're, we're about to start. So we, we need to hold a meeting. And um, something just came up. Uh, we, we, we had to spend money on this. So we don't think we are ready to do that now. Like, ah, but you promised. Yeah, I know, I know. I still have it in mind, but not now. Okay, run to partner two. Hey, it's very easy. Ah, do you know yesterday I, had, I ran into some bad business and I lost some money. I don't think I'm ready to. Ah, then you realize you're alone. Hey, hey, and I've resigned my job. What do I do? Should I go back to my boss and say I made a mistake? Please, sir. I, I made him. No, God purposely did that to you. Why? So that you will look up and say, Who? Oh, my help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. So, why did all those people agree with me? Yes, God was. See, God saw your faith and He was trying to pad it up so that you would take the right step. See? Now you took the right step. He pulls all those strings away and you're left alone. Now prove to Him. That you trust him, not in the, not in men or in the arm of the flesh. Look up to him and says, "My help doesn't come from man." My, you know that scripture we quote, "I'll look, lift up my eyes to the hills from when come my." Enemy. That's not what David, David actually said. Will I lift up my eyes to the hills? Where, where, where really does my help come from? Not the hills. My help comes from the Lord. So I will not lift up my eyes to the hills. No, no, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. No. It's actually saying I will not lift up my eyes to the hills because my help doesn't come from there. It comes from the Lord who is the maker of heaven and earth. Praise God. So take your eyes off those partners, those people that have promised you heaven and earth. Take your eyes off all those things. Set your gaze on the Lord. He said, Lord, I know you've commanded me to do this and I'm going to do it. I'll do it right. I'll do it well. Some of you are running from bank to bank looking for who will loan you money to start up a business. Come on, get out of that boat. Get out of that boat. Put your whole proposal before the Lord. He said, Lord, what would you have me do? <laughs> oh, Marakasa Pradi Hetekene. And the word of the Lord will come to you. Ah, and when the word of God comes to you, that is all you need. I'm telling you, that is all you need. I remember my wife and I, when we were about to get married, one month to our wedding, nothing done. No money at all. Nothing, as in nothing. But the Lord had told us, so, so day, you're, get, get, you're going to get married. So, so day, told us the place we're getting married and everything. So we've secured all those things. One month to the time, nothing. And I went before the Lord. I said, Lord, we've obeyed you to this point. What do we do now? And then the Lord spoke to me. He says, take, both of you take your tithe and go give it to a so -so person. So I spoke to my fiancé then, who's now my wife. I said, see what the Lord said to me? Are you gay? And then she brought her tithe. I brought my, we we'll put it together. And we went to the person that the Lord commanded us to take it to. And she blessed us. And guess what? After that day, the heavens opened. Things began to work from left, right, center, and we had a wonderful. 
when they praise God. Yeah. His word was what we got. And we believed him. If you will believe his word, you will see miracles. Have a wonderful weekend full of miracles and glory. God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.